I'll not go into the details of the pressure half time, but suffice to say that the microorifice area can be ascertained by taking the gradient across the mitral valve and taking the image of that gradient, taking the slope of that image, and the computer will automatically give you the mitral valve area and the pressure half time. The pressure half time divided this uh, uh, divided by two twenty. It will give you the uh, this mitral valve area. One centimeter squared mitral valve area is equal to two twenty milliseconds of the pressure half time. So, therefore, the mitral orifice area is equal to 220 divided by the pressure half time. Pressure half time more than 220 gives you a mitral valve area less than one centimeter squared. A pressure half time of more than 220 gives you a mitral orifice area of more than one centimeter squared. And I told you that mitral valve area of less than one centimeter squared requires treatment, requires treatment. Uh, and usually, you can use the medical treatment initially by slowing down the heart rate using beta blockers. You can slow down the heart rate and you can use uh, a low to mild dose of beta blockers initially. But later on, you need to open up the mitral valve using balloon mitral valvoplasty. But if the valve is highly calcified, and the subvalvar apparatus is severely involved by a rheumatic process and calcified and, and, the, and the calcification over that process, then you need to do a mitral valve replacement using so an open heart surgery can be done. So nowadays, even the cardiologists are treating the mitral valve. Uh, this mitral valve replacement is being done by by um, this uh, catheterization method. So you have a transcutaneous method of opening up the valve, putting up a tissue valve inside the mitral orifice, just like you do a, a tower procedure for aortic stenosis. People have started doing, not so much in India, but abroad people are doing that the opening up of the mitral valve by, by uh, opening up of the mitral orifice and putting in a valve, a tissue valve, and therefore treating the mitral orifice and treating the mitral stenosis. Now this was the PISA method, I'll not go into the details, of the PISA method, because first of all, it requires a lot of experience and expertise. And many people, most people don't have that to, to look at the PISA for microstenosis and it has its drawbacks. And this is the substituted volumes equation that you can get the cardiac output divided by the mean tissue gradient as an approximation of the mitral orifice area. But the most accurate method is planimetry. And this is the Wilkins score that is done to see the to see whether the mitral valve is suitable for a balloon mitral valve velocity. So we look at four aspects. We look at the mitral valve thickening, we look at the mitral valve calcification, and grade it as one to four, as has been shown. We look at the subvalvar apparatus of the body. And we look at the mobility of the mitral valve and grade it from one to four. And a total score of less than eight indicates a good valve for mitral valve velocity. Eight to 10 actually depends on the expertise of the operator and his experience in saying whether he would like to go ahead with BMB. And more than 10, score of more than 10, usually makes this valve not suitable for mitral valvoplasty. 
So this is how it is done. We'll not go into the details, but a score of less than eight has indicated a good results with BMB. Score of more than 12 is poor results. And eight to 12 is a suboptimal results, but needs to be individualized. Now this is the QLab quantification using 3D for taking up the mitral valve. So this is the mitral valve area is using the 3D echo and you're taking up the valve directly at the tips as has been shown at the third picture. And then, you know, enlarging that picture and getting the mitral orifice area. You, you, you are getting the mitral orifice area as has been shown over here by 3D echo. But there are also a simplified method of a 3D echo using the eye crop as we call it. I'm not going to the details, but you put a box across the mitral valve leaflets and then you get automatically the mitral orifice in short axis as the third picture. And you can enlarge that picture as over here and get the mitral valve area, which can be planimeter. But you know, the 3D echo requires a lot of experience and expertise. With generally people are tend, tend to, you know, not do it because they can make out by 2D itself. And sometimes in a busy OPD, because th this takes some time and uh, they don't want to get involved in 3D uh, in, a, in a busy OPD, but it is always better to do it. And if you have the facility at the machine, if you have paid for, for, for that facility, it is better to use it and go for learning at, at the advanced centers, at the advanced centers and learn the 3D and then able to apply it on your machine. So this is the mitral orifice area using uh, and the mitral valve morphology and rheumatic heart disease and, de and degenerative disease like the myxomatous mitral valve. And you can see the 3D morphology. And this is from the LV aspect, the 3D. And this is from the crop from the this particular aspect. So we have finished with the 3D echo, but very important to note the management of matrices, as we say, and usually it is usually it is the medical treatment, which may include diuretics and beta blockers, and uh, you know the management of the patient to go into acute pulmonary edema. So, and you should remember that in patients with a high cardiac output. Even a mild mitosinosis can produce a pulmonary edema or a mild to moderate stenosis, say mitral valley area 1.5, can produce a high left atrial pressure and a pulmonary edema and requires to be treated. And in pregnancy, sometimes for, for the first time, these, these, uh, these patients come to know about that they have got rheumatic heart disease and mitral stenosis. And if they are severely symptomatic, then they need to have the BMB done after the first, first trimester. But generally, the BMB should be guided by echocardiography rather than cardiac catheterization. And you should have the people who are experts in the echocardiography during invasive procedures like BMB. 
So when these, this is available, this expertise is available, then it can be done eco-guided. But most of the people do it guided by cardiac text, by a fluoroscopic image, and which is not good for the baby. It's not good for, for this fetus because the, these X-rays can be harmful, but shielding can be done. And if required, it should be done after the first, first, first trimester. But if you can manage it this medically by diuretics and beta blockers, then that is a better option during pregnancy. But uh, sometimes we can do a mitral valvotomy by the BMB technique even during during the pregnancy. Now, thank you very much.